Oh no, euro dollar. Sorry, apologies. Euro dollar. I think that looked different. Um, euro dollar. Right. Okay. So, so overall, 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 what do we have from a daily perspective? I'm looking to, you know, the first opportunity to get short is going to be in this supply zone, 100%. So daily wise, cool. Now, what else has this daily chart got going for it? Um, it's got the one one two round number. Sorry, supply zone. This it's got the one one two round number is around here at the moment. Um, <clears throat> as far as moving averages, dynamic. Support and resistance. Let's see where the moving averages are. Well, we've got a nice 200 at the moment, you know, around here, which is always good. Um, first time it's kind of come back and hit that after crossing, so decent. Uh, from a from a RSI perspective, we've got prices yet yeah, coming up into that extreme. I like that. I like that. So to get high probability trades. A great a, a, a tip that I use is that I will tend not to buy or sell anything unless it comes into an RSI. RSIs are a, 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 a very uh, a very high probability type trades, um, but the, the obviously the downside to that would be it could reverse and you might miss the trade. But there's pros and cons to everything. High probability, but you might you might take less trades only when they are exactly at the extreme. Exactly, Kev. Right. So. Um, but we first need to see prices come into that supply zone. So that's the, the high time frame. We've got volume divergence, which I like as well. Um, so volume divergence is basically potential manipulation going on that day. Uh, so let's zoom down now into the six hour and let's see what we see. So from this perspective, we have a... You know, manipulations happen around obvious levels of support and resistance. So you can pretty much see that area there. Uh, and I think we were talking about was it was it this one we were talking about, um, Adam, uh, last week at some point. Leon, would you still use the RSI and lower time frames? Um, no. Even though it's there, even though it is there, and there is a case for using you know, uh, uh, RSI extremes on the other one. Just because I don't use it doesn't mean that you can't use it, if you know what I mean, yeah? But I prefer to just look at, you know, the extreme on the daily and because I know that's really what, what, what matters the most and then I'll look for outside candles, daily and above, exactly, yeah? But let's look at this from a perspective of somebody who trades support and resistance, yeah? So what, what are they seeing at the moment? What are they seeing right now? They're seeing lower highs and lower lows, right? They're seeing that, 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 yep, and then that. Now what are traders gonna do? Traders looking to get short, right? They're looking to get short right here. It's just a no brainer, support, Support should turn to what? Resistance. Resistance. Right. So, with that, you know where all the stop losses are. All the stop losses are here. There's no debating. The majority, you know, of stop losses, yeah, are right there. There's no debating. I don't care what anybody says. Support and resistance traders are getting in short there. You've got price action, you've got pin bars. And this is it, this goes back to again, I think what um I think uh Adam H was saying about time frames and entries, yeah. It doesn't really matter about this time frame where you see a pin bar there, or whether you see it on a four hour, whether you see it on a one hour, traders are gonna be in. Yeah, at some point. This if this level's gonna go, it's going to go. They were people are going to find a reason to enter. So people enter with on candlesticks. This is Euro dollar. Euro dollar, Kev. Yeah. So people are going to find a, a reason to enter. Double tops. You see what I'm saying? Divergence on the, on the RSI, double top, etc. Not everyone enters on candlestick formations. They're just going to enter, right? So this is now got them in. Yeah. 
this kind of price action has got them in because they because people chase price, don't they? They're not too short at the moment, but then when prices start to move, what happens? What happens to you when prices start to move in a trade that you think you should have got in? You're going to FOMO in. You know, you're going to FOMO in. Place your stop loss here because it's the only place you can place it, all right? And then, going back to the six hour quickly, then what happens? Boom. We start to get stop hunts. Yeah. These guys have now been stop hunted. Yeah. And especially as well, never disregard the fact that the US dollar, yeah, just had some decent news regarding inflation. CPI rises in 2019 at fastest pace in eight years. Inflation is still a little bit low, but you know, we had some really good news for the US dollar. I'm just gonna go back a little bit. Uh, all right, countries. What time is it? All right, I'll try and spend maybe another 10 minutes on this and then I give it a go, right? So inflation rate, so it went from 2.1 to 2.3. So it's increased inflation wise, yeah? Brilliant. Good news, yeah? We should get short, right? Everybody should get short there, which is what's happened. But obviously, the stop losses are here. So now this provides an opportunity for what? Not to get long, but to buy dollar at a cheaper exchange rate. Now, we don't know whether prices are going to range or are going to bounce from anywhere in here. We have no idea. Yeah. But what we do know is that this whole area above, <coughs> this whole area above fair value starts to look now more like a bargain. I've got to shoot. No worries, mate. Thanks for your time. No worries, mate. No worries. Well, it starts to look like a bargain now, doesn't it? Like an absolute bargain. So now all we're doing is looking for some short trades. That represents the absolute bargain at the top. And these areas represent a decent discount. Yeah, that represents a discount. So now what we're doing, all we're doing now is just understanding where value potentially is and looking to get short in those areas. That's it. These guys as well at the top. Would you think these guys, these guys are caught in their positions? Capture pain relief. Anyone who went long here in that area is caught in their position. So we've got the CPR right at the highs. So if prices can get up to the highs, that would be the best area to look for short trades. That's where I'm looking for short trades. If it can get up there or with anywhere within this supply zone. Make sense?